This is Andy. Andy's being chased by a bear. Andy's sympathetic nervous system is going to give him a choice to fight or flight. This bear just had a good lunch. His parasympathetic nervous system is going to help him rest and digest. This is Andy's sympathetic nervous system at work. And it is known as the fight or flight response. It is the nervous system that is taking over your body during times of stress. And that can be emotional stress or physical stress, like if you're being chased by a bear, or maybe if you're nervous about going into surgery. So what happens when your sympathetic nervous system is activated? It causes things that would help you run. And what do I mean by that? Well, um, it is going to cause your heart rate to increase. You need that so you have better blood flow to your limbs so you can run. It is going to decrease your digestion because you don't need to spend time digesting while you're running. If you were really being chased by a bear, that would not be a priority. It's going to increase your breathing rate because that's going to help you run away from the bear. And it is going to increase your blood glucose because your body stores glucose when you eat and releases it later when you need it. And if you were about to run away from a bear, your, um, your muscles for running would need this um, blood sugar for energy. So it's going to release stored energy in your liver into your bloodstream so that you can run away. So in pharmacology class and in the surge tech class, when we discuss the pharmacology chapter and the uh, anesthetic chapter, we are going to discuss andrenergic drugs. and anti-andrenergic drugs, which are also called beta blockers or beta andrenergic blockers. Agonists are going to increase the effect of a receptor on a cell, and antagonists are going to decrease the effect of a receptor on a cell by blocking access to that receptor. So andrenergic drugs are going to increase the fight or flight response, and anti-andrenergic drugs are going to decrease the fight or flight response. So what that means is when we give Andrenergic drugs, we are going to get an increase in heart rate. We are going to get a decrease in digestion. We are going to get an increase in breathing rate. We are going to get an increase in blood sugar. And we are going to get um, something I didn't mention over here is that it's going to decrease peripheral peripheral um, blood flow so it's concentrating your body's concentrating on getting blood to your major muscle groups so that you can run away but not necessarily to your fingers and toes and things so that you can have fine motor skills. Those aren't as important when you're trying to run away from a, from a bear. So it is going to give us um, vasoconstriction. So um, drugs that we would give 
in the andrenergic category are epinephrine, and this is going to usually be used for vasoconstriction. So we're going to add it to some of our local anesthetics to decrease the amount of blood flowing to that area so that there will be less blood loss during the surgery. Um, but the andrenergic drugs are going to increase the heart rate, so epinephrine is also given during anaphylactic shock. And during anaphylactic shock, your body's going to close off your airway so that it's hard to breathe um, as a response to whatever allergen you've come into contact with. Um, so we're going to give epinephrine because it increases breathing. It's going to increase our heart rate. And that is going to help um, people fight off this anaphylactic shock. So to um, help them open up their airways and be able to breathe again. Anti-andrenergic drugs also called beta blockers, also called um, beta andrenergic blockers, are going to decrease the fight or flight response. So we are turning down the responses that help us run. So we're going to decrease the heart rate. We're going to decrease the breathing rate. And a drug that we might give that's going to be in that category is going to be propranolol from a um, drug that, we, that would be given in the OR, not by surge text specifically, of course. Um, and so if we Side effects of andrenergic drugs are going to make sense in the context of this um, fight or flight response because they're going to be increasing the fight or fight, flight response. So we're going to get tachycardia because we're increasing our heart rate. We're going to get palpitations because of the increase in heart rate. We're going to have hypertension, high blood pressure, because our heart rate is going to be increased. So we're going in our peripheral blood flow is going to be decreased, so we're clamping down our vessels and pumping more blood through it, so that is going to increase our blood pressure. We're going to have nervousness. Of course, if you're breathing fast, your heart's beating fast, you're going to feel nervous, and hyperglycemia because you're pumping more blood sugar out so that you can run away from the bear. So then when we talk about anti-andrenergic drugs, we're going to be decreasing all of those responses. So um, anti-andrenergic drugs or beta andrenergic blockers or beta blockers are going to come with the side effects of hypotension because we are decreasing our heart rate. We are not decreasing our peripheral blood flow. So we're going to have open dilated vessels and a decreased um, heart rate. So that's going to decrease our blood pressure. We're going to have bradycardia, because we're slowing our heart rate. We're going to have fatigue, because we're breathing slow, our heart rate slow, we're going to feel calm. Um, depression is going to come along as a side effect. Same physical response, kind of the an uh, opposite of the nervousness that you might feel. And then hypoglycemia, because we're going to be um, not increasing our blood sugar, so our blood sugar is going to come down, so we're going to have low blood sugar.